Hello and welcome to yet another powerful session in Technofunda Investing channel. Hope all of you are doing great and thank you so much for joining this session. Today's session is again very very special session. In this session we'll discuss uh, how to use some of these uh, valuation ratios practically in our investing journey, right? So you might have heard lot of things, lot of myths about different ratios but today we are going to burst all of those things and most importantly we will learn what not to do when you are doing a valuation and when you are using ratio analysis in your investing journey so to get started with i would ask you a question very simple question when you are watching a cricket match right what do you see when you watch a cricket match uh, to determine whether a player has done really good or whether a team has really done good you see the average right what is the batting average what is the run rate how many runs that player is doing in a over and in a 50 over what entire uh, team has done now it is 2020 so in 20 overs you know how many runs a team has done and what is the average run rate so on the basis of run rate and different ratios we analyze cricket match now if you think about your car right when you buy a car you again take a decision based on how much average my car is giving what is the you know kilometer it is going per liter of petrol now what is that that is again a ratio right these many kilometers for a particular liter of petrol when you are renting out your house or when you are buying your house you again you know think about this you think about what is my rental yield you know if i buy this house and and give it for rent how much return i am getting for the price which i am paying and stock market is no different my friends when you think about valuation when you think about companies when you think about how to buy a company at a particular price the exact same logic applies but wish it would have been so simple right just like measuring a cricket match run rate or a mileage of our car and that is where today's session is going to be super important so if you are all ready just hit a thumbs up and let's get started with this powerful session it is going to be slightly longer take a lot of notes it is going to be slightly advanced concept but if you watch lot of my videos inside this channel it is going to be a cake walk to understand all the different components so let's get started all right so we will dissect uh, different component in terms of understanding what ratios we should think about how actually market is driven and what all things are very important when you are taking your decisions while investing in stock market journey so let me share my screen and straight away let's go to the disclaimer i'll just uh, move my uh, head this side so that i can uh, show you the entire disclaimer hope it is clear and let's straight away go into the slide okay so first thing which i uh, you know usually cover in our hackathon also when i teach uh, core portfolio how to build core portfolio and what are the different components of core portfolio returns this is one of the most important slides which we start with okay now i want to share this on a ipad so that all of you can uh, learn it in a nicer way i'll just give you the context of what this is all about right now say for example you are invested in a share right you have bought a company your buying price is 100 rupees and you sold it say for 1000 rupees right your buying and selling decision at a certain price will determine what your returns right so you have made a 10x into it or 900% return on your investment now what does this comprises of this comprises of say earnings of the company where you might have bought in so say for example this company might be doing say 5 rupees earnings right so this company the earnings per share might be 5 rupees when you bought the company and when you sold the company it could have been say for example say let's say 30 rupees right let's uh, take a round figure of 30 rupees when you sold it off now if you think about it what did you pay when you bought this particular company so you paid 20 times of the amount right so you paid 20 times of the earnings when you bought it and when you are selling it how much you are selling for right so say for example if it is 30 rupees roughly like 33 times you are paying for the 30 rupees right so that is roughly 1000 rupees now what has changed 
your earnings has gone to 6x right so from 5 rupees it has gone to 30 rupees and your multiple has gone like from 20 to 20 times to 33 times so if you think about the market actually the returns actually work on two things one is the earnings growth all of you please note it down earnings growth and second is price to earning multiple price to earnings multiple is nothing but how many times of the earnings you are paying to buy that company okay this is super clear to all of you just type super clear in the comment box because this is the foundation of what we are going to discuss in terms of valuation ratios and then it will make you the holistic sense in the entire journey so now think about this why a investor would be paying a certain times multiple at one point of time and then when you are selling somebody else is paying slightly higher or lower multiple to you what could be the factors while taking this decision in the minds of the investor like if you are there what do you think about a company when you are deciding to pay that premium to that earnings what are the factors just type in the comment box so that i can understand first one is uh, the future right investing is all about future if you feel that okay i buy a house in gurgaon or delhi or mumbai or bangalore in next few years it is going to appreciate you don't mind slightly paying premium price is it clear so if we feel again it is a perception it's a perception in the mind of investor that yes probably the price in this market or this company will go up because this is a growing market or this is a growing company so the perceived growth about the company is one factor where you give that valuation multiple right that is p price to earnings multiple the second very important thing to decide even that perceived value of growth is the past performance right if it is like sachin tendulkar you know he might most likely hit centuries in next coming future also because you have seen the track record of that company and because you have seen the track record you want to probably value it more the third thing which is very important you will see is the commentary of the management or the plans which already it is uh, you know either available in the public domain or might not be available in the public domain but there is some trigger which uh, some set of investors know that this company is going to launch a new product this company is going to go into a new geography this company is going to put up a new plant and hence again the growth might come there is a high probability that the growth will come if this is clear to all of you just type super clear in the comment box so let's go back to the slide and let's try to understand how to decipher it so if you think about this first the very important uh, parameter in terms of understanding is business performance and second is the sentiment the perception in the minds of the investor now there is one more thing that happens when you think about uh, the valuation the overall market cycle itself right in beer market nobody wants to invest i clearly observe like even in our community when there is beer market nobody wants to research nobody wants to learn new things nobody is coming up with new stock ideas even the you know social media telegram groups are dry nobody wants to discuss stock but when it goes euphoric what happens what happens telegram groups are buzzing whatsapps are buzzing social media is buzzing everybody wants to research a stock everybody wants to learn everybody wants to read a book and that is where you know the market sentiment is again very very important so the same company without any change just because of the entire market cycle itself can have a different perception in the minds of investor if this is clear to all of you just type clear in the comment box because valuation is not like a very simple game like a you know mileage of a car or a uh, you know run rate of a player it is slightly more deeper than that and nobody will talk you talk to you about all these things because it requires a lot of practical understanding and a lot of experience over a market cycle people will just give you theoretical things that yes price to earnings is p by e price to book value is p by b ev by ebitda is this and then you know you get confused and now what to do what is the interpretation how to actually understand this so this is the first building block all of us should understand now let's go deeper into this so now one very very powerful thing which i learned from so many of my mentors is that uh, everything is cyclical right in the world everything is cyclical if you see interest rates 
in US there were one point of time negative interest rate or almost zero interest rate now it is almost six seven percent same way you know the kind of uh, credit cycle that goes on sometimes there is a lot of borrowing sometimes there is excess money flowing in the world is cyclical right even our nature is cyclical many times we feel a lot of energy energy in terms of doing things sometimes we feel bored sometimes we are in our zone and we do a lot of things and sometimes we don't do at all so don't think that world is linear and what you see is going to continue for a long period of time and this is one of the biggest again mistake which people make while valuing a company they feel that this whatever is going it's going to be perpetual it will go on forever the party will last forever and that is where you know the most of the buy and hold investors get disappointed because they feel that world is world is going to stay constant world is never going to change this company will remain like this forever how many of you think that today's time and age the world is even fast changing than how it used to before and and it's going to accelerate even further in the future if you believe so just type me in the comment box the world is so so fast moving there are disruption happening across all all the uh, different channels and if you have seen like uh, one of my video which i did recently that was on uh, chat gpt I, i would highly recommend all of you to check it out like how you can actually now use chat gpt for your investing decisions and a lot of the analysis which previously used to take like hours and hours of effort can be done in a very very short span of time so just search with chat gpt vivek mashrani on youtube and you will see like crazy things world is going through and and things are changing so so fast okay so that is where please don't believe that everything is perpetual okay that is the first thing and this i learned from howard marks in its book and i also covered in my book as well now why things are cyclical and what it does to you know the capital cycle this again i've learned from a book called capital returns now this is a very very important concept okay to understand this concept again i'll uh, go to my ipad and share with you what it all means okay so let me go to my ipad and uh, show you what it means so everything in business generally is driven by one big ratio in fact all the decisions which we make also generally has this one parameter what is it return on investment right if i put 1 rupee how much money i'll get it right uh, same thing you know when you invest also you feel that okay this much amount i put it how much return i'm going to get if i put it in fd this is the return i'll get if i put it in equity this is the return potentially i get so every investor who is putting capital they will think in terms of roi and that is where you know any industry please note it down any industry where new capital is required the investor will think about what is the opportunity if i put money into hotel if i make a hotel out of this capital what kind of return i am going to generate okay so if say for example hotel industry is booming and there is very low, less of supply lot of new investors will jump in they will put capital and they will make lot of hotels because it's lucrative the prices are high they are getting good return in putting that money now if everyone starts thinking like that what will happen what is the logical next step that happens if so many hotels comes up right for short duration they might earn lot of money but then you know what you will see is that competition kicks in okay so now what happens is the demand is not rising so much and the supply is increase so much so what happens is your returns goes down so earlier you were having say 20000 rupees per night hotel rates now it will go down to 15000 it will go down to 12000 and probably earlier you were making 20% on your return now you will make 12% on your return and still you might feel that this is a good investment because i'm getting say 7% in fd i'm still fine but there will be one juncture where lot of these hotels will not be even occupied because there is so much of supply they are running into losses all the fixed cost are eating them and that is where you will see this red phase where you will see that the investment will decline because no new investor is interested into this there will be lot of consolidation you know some companies will exit and there will be clean up that is happening and every investor is pessimistic are yaar kon hotel mein paisa dale isme to paisa banta hi nahi room rate dekh rahe ho how it is falling 
and then slowly what have what will happen is slowly the demand will go up and the supply is not coming up right in fact a lot of supply is going out due to exits and consolidation and some cost restructuring and everything so demand slowly picks up and supply is not that much so again you know the supply side economics is improving and slowly there will be a point where again you know there is demand which is overcoming supply and there is where again new capital will emerge this is where investors will start putting up so this is the capital returns uh, cycle which i learned from this book called capital returns or capital cycle you can say it but each and every industry goes through this cycle uh, in a different phases if it is a highly cyclical industry it happens very very fast if it is not a highly cyclical industry it happens slightly slow okay so that is what uh, all of you need to learn in this uh, overall journey let me now go to the next slide so that all of you can understand further yeah and some of you also pointed margins go down now this again you know is a powerful framework those who are part of my community and if you have participated in my hackathon you know what it is all about right it is called uh, something known as stage analysis now for all the new members who who might be visiting this channel for the first time and you might not be part of your part of my community this is one of the biggest biggest learning you could actually imbibe in your investing journey if you want to avoid big losses and if you want to make big money by riding winners so uh, let me explain you what happens here so what is uh, the journey of these cyclical companies is uh, you know initially it will be more like a value stock right so it will be like slow growing stock and there will be some trigger that is coming up and that is where what you will see is initially the pe ratio would be slightly small say 10 times price to earnings multiple because there is no growth for many many years together now remember market is a discounting machine so even before the actual earnings comes in lot of people will know that there is something happening in this company and in future there is a growth that is coming in so what will happen is slowly there will be accumulation that will happen and here you will see that ratio valuation will become much higher say 60p what this multiple is factoring in is it like a euphoria or it's a rational decision of an investor because there is genuine growth that is going to kicking in it's a genuine demand that is created from the informed investor some of the smartest of the smart investor who know that the growth is coming so they are willing to pay slightly higher for that growth based on the growth that is going to come up so if there is like say for 2 3 years that is there is some 60 70% growth that is going to come up this valuation is still justified right so what will happen is then the growth will come up okay so the growth will come up the stock will start rising lot of other people will know the valuation will start increasing and there will be euphoria which will get built up here so there will be a zone where people are so euphoric that they don't care about valuation they want to just jump in now you might say vivek should we exit here when the euphoria is just kicking in my answer is no because if you go by the traditional ways if you just follow fundamental analysis there is no way you will you will be able to take any meaningful objective exit but if you follow technical analysis you can actually ride this euphoria and let me tell you the most money is made in this euphoria phase if you are able to ride it correctly and then what will happen the distribution phase will start where all the smart investors will start uh, selling off and all these euphoric investors will become long term investor forever and then finally the fall will happen the cycle will go down and whatever capital return cycle i explain that will start happening here now as an investor first thing you need to know is you should have a mechanism of riding this entire phase okay any mechanism what you feel about so from uh, you know decent fair valuation to extremely euphoric valuation now think about this what will happen also here is even during this phase you will see like a 60 pe kind of valuation the difference between this 60 pe and this 60 pe is what here there is future growth which is there so in one or two years once the growth comes in the valuation will normalize but this is a overvaluation not many investors understand this 
they simply say oh 60 valuation i will not even see this company it is too much overvalued how many of you have heard this from lot of investors who just blanketly tell you that okay if p is higher it is overvalued if p is lower it is undervalued most of the textbooks where theoretical things are discussed they basically discuss this okay if it is 30p it is slightly fair value if it is 50p overvalued and if it is uh, say 70 80p it is highly overvalued but given the growth please remember this because lot of investors make this mistake that if the growth is going to come and growth is much higher than the multiple you are paying it will normalize in few years in fact you will make lot of money even after buying at 50 multiple because there is like a crazy growth that is coming up i have lot of case studies which i cover in my hackathon you just go through page industry what happened in 2009 to 2015 what happened to la opala from 9 to 2015 what happened to aisher motors from 2009 to 2015 when growth comes in you can see 40 50 bagger also so if this is clear just type super clear in the comment box another problem which a lot of investors face is they don't exit in this phase when the stock is falling you need to avoid this at any case again you need to have a mechanism for that i have entire system which i uh, you know cover in my system building part and unless you don't have that kind of system to exit even you if you have made money even if you have wrote the euphoria you will give it back all if this was bull bond just type bull bond in the comment box and let me show you some very very prominent uh, examples right let me show you one of my favorite example which i have been like posting multiple times on the telegram group is this sequent scientific right so this company in just 3 years it went through this entire cycle right so it went through a phase of you know value buying where you will see there is a price volume action some of the smartest investors are entering in then it goes further high then there is euphoria that is getting built up here people are selling with a big volume right you can see like people are selling with a big volume and then you know it it keeps dwindling down if you participate in this fall you will give back all the profit and if you participate in this rise you will make tons and tons of money like we have hundreds of members inside our community who are doing this applying this and now what i've done is i've created a you know indicator itself which tells me i need to exit so if you see this green zone that is the zone where it will tell me i need to keep invest stay invested right so despite slightly higher valuation despite euphoria i'll stay invested but when this starts becoming red like you can see this xyz red z z z z red entire red area it'll tell me don't enter here stay out and not just this company you can apply to any company in the world any indices in the world right so say for example we take a zoom uh, which is nasdaq based uh, company right the zoom uh, conference what we are using video conferencing now just check this out can you see a exact same similarity in this company also and what i was talking about in terms of euphoria see this phase can you see in so short period of time you can make tons and tons of money if you are able to stay in euphoria now no fundamental will tell you this okay so when you go by valuation it will be misleading so let me show you the previous example of sequent scientific and uh, you know show you how fundamentally it gets connected with the same philosophy okay so let me again load the sequence scientific uh, chart which is here and i would request all of you to go through the financials and also download this excel template which is of sequence scientific okay so that i can explain you clearly i'll also give you the link of this uh, template which you can use to analyze and combine the fundamentals to take your investing decisions and i have posted this in the description also in the comment section also and i'll uh, share it over here also so that you don't miss it out just give me a second i'll give you this uh, particular link okay so you can go to this particular link technofunda.co/excel and you will be able to download this excel yes anshu that is uh, shaktiman indicator which i just showed you yes uh, so uh, there is a question from anshu uh, whether it is a shaktiman indicator or not yes 
So that is a custom made indicator where I've combined all my different strategies and that one indicator is so powerful now that uh, it's, it's helping me a lot to take investing decisions, okay? So now let's go deeper into the concepts, okay? So let me share the screen now and hope all of you have noted the Excel and you have downloaded it. Now just go to this particular, uh, you know, quarterly financials. Now what happened in this quarterly financials is like December onwards, there was a fall that started happening in the company. So December 21, it was 19, then it became 10, then it became minus 14, then minus 4, minus 10, minus 92. Now see the psychology that works for the investor. Now see here, this is still July, August 21. And when did the bad result came in? See, September 21, the result would have come in in what? October or November, right? So, and the peak result came in in December. Okay, so that time it was one of the best earnings that this company did. So, what will happen, I'll tell you. If you just follow fundamental analysis, what will be your psychology? Okay, so I'll just explain you in a nicer way so that you can understand. Now, see, June result would have come in in some August and that is where this fall has started happening. Okay, maybe management commentary also might be there. But apart from that, when you see the earnings, you will feel like, boss, it's a good earnings, right? It was doing some 3 crores earlier. Now it is 14 crore. Nice result. Even the growth is there in terms of sales. So let me hold it. The fundamentals are intact. That is what I keep hearing from investors. Then it keeps falling further. Okay, so it keeps falling further. Uh, October, November, December, it has fallen. And uh, the December result will come somewhere in February, where it is almost half. 150 rupees from 300 rupees. We have not taken exit decision because we feel fundamentals are intact. Okay, so what happens then? Then you see that, okay, oh, it is from 14 crore, 19 crore pat. So the earnings are even better. So market is wrong. Okay, everybody is full in the market. I am getting very cheap valuation. Let me buy more. That is the biggest mistake somebody can do. Okay. Can anyone tell me why does this happen? Despite all the earnings becoming, uh, you know, intact and highest earnings that is coming up. Why market is sensing something wrong and the stock price is getting hammered again and again and it is falling 30%, 50%, 60%. Why it is happening? Do you have an answer for this? Just type in the comment box if you have answer for this. So the answer for this is very simple actually if you think about it. Market is a discounting machine. Okay, so it will discount the future information much faster. Those people who have gone through that cycle, who understand the industry, they will know that these kind of margins are not sustainable. They know that these kind of earnings are not sustainable. These kind of valuations are not sustainable. And that is where they will start booking profit. So if you like uh, just be on the... Keep on just watching fundamentals. You will only realize after few quarters what happened. You can see loss of 14 crore, loss of 4 crore, loss of 10 crore. If you still don't sell it, loss of 92 crore. And what do people think? Oh, it has already fallen 50% or kitna niche jayega, right? So from 178 also, 150 also, it can fall still 50% down, right? It can also reach 75 rupees. And from 75 rupees also it can go 50% down. It can also go 100% down and can become zero also. Okay. So please keep it in mind that price is a leading indicator. Of course, fundamentals are important. But the price and the technical analysis will lead you to the future fundamentals. It will give you insights in terms of boss, there is something wrong. Please look at me. Okay. And that is where, you know, I like this very, very powerful comment from uh, late Will Will William O'Neill when I created this slide. Uh, you know, he was there still. And somehow, you know, last few days he has uh, no more in the world. But what he has uh, said is very, very powerful. My philosophy is that all stocks are bad. So in principle, you consider everything is bad. If you want to make a buying decision, 
there are no good stocks unless they go up in price. If they go down instead, you have to cut your losses fast. Letting losses run is the biggest mistake made by most investors. Now you'll say, but Vivek, then, then what is the role of fundamental analysis? Now think about this. If the fundamentals of a company are really good, then lot many smart investors should get attracted about that company. And if lot of these smart investors get attracted and they buy the stock, the price will automatically start going up. Hello, are you able to understand? Yes. So this is where you know the valuation when you see optically, but you see from the lens of future growth, it's a vast, vast big difference that you need to understand. Okay. So that is what, uh, you know, it's a very, very powerful theme, which you can understand. Now, if you think about the earnings growth, I teach a very, very deeper concept around it, which is called four cylinder model in terms of how the earnings actually grow. So it grows with sales growth, it grows with operating leverage, margin expansion and debt reduction. And all these things I've again covered in this ratio analysis, right? So you will see what is the impact in terms of uh, margins, right? What is the impact in terms of uh, interest coverage ratio? What is the impact in terms of your inventory turnover, your fixed asset turnover? And all these things, again, I have covered in one of the separate session in terms of ratio analysis, okay? So you can go to... Uh, this YouTube channel itself, just type ratio analysis Vivek Mashrani and you will find a video where I have covered this in a very, very deep way uh, to understand how to make sense of all these ratios. So this is the video you should go for. Must know financial ratios Vivek Mashrani and you will understand what are the connecting dots about this ratios. Okay. So once you download this Excel, you will understand uh, what all ratios are important and if these ratios are getting deteriorated. Say for example, in the case of, uh, you know, sequence scientific, you can see the margins were falling drastically, right? So from range of 11%, it fell to 4.9%. That was a very, very big red flag. If you see the return on equities were falling drastically from like 11, 12%, it fell drastically and then it went to negative also. If you see the debt equity ratio was also spiking a bit and they were borrowing slightly more. And even, you know, in terms of PE ratio, this is where, you know, it will again be misleading. When it is like actually the earnings are falling, you will feel that, okay, why the ratio is looking too much high and this is, uh, you know, something weird and all those things. Because again, same thing, you know, future looking growth. Future looking growth is what you should see. Now, what is a double-edged sword you need to be careful about? So whatever I told you, right, the margin expansion through which the earnings grows, the sales growth through which the earnings grows, then the valuation multiple PE re-rating happens. Everything will be good when things are going fine. But when things go down, this is the zone of risk which you should avoid. Because if all these things starts going against us, it will kill you, right? So zone of risk is what? It is peak earnings where the earnings are at peak, like how we saw in sequence scientific, like 19, you know, crores, which is highest earnings in that quarter. The valuations are high and the margins are at its peak. This is where you need a tight exit strategy. Once this happens, you can still ride, but you need some kind of these technical indicators to have your exit in place so that as soon as the earning starts falling, the valuation starts falling, the margin starts falling, you don't get a hit like this and you protect your capital. Because protection of your capital, margin of safety, risk management is what it takes to make money in the market. The return will follow if you follow the risk management process. Okay. And this is what again happens uh, in different industry, graphite electrode uh, industry, same thing happened, uh, you know, MDF, same thing happened, the supply side increases, same cycle repeats, you can study all these cycles and you know, it goes again and again and again. You can see like uh, the kind of margin profile these had. In fact, let me, uh, you know, just download this so that you can understand a couple of these. So let me uh, open up Rushil Decor itself. Okay, so let's go to the same Excel and uh, let's go to Rushil Decor. If you don't have the Excel right now, you can just go and download it. So go to Rushil Decor and see what has happened in Rushil Decor. Okay, so if you see the ratio analysis, 
you will see the peak uh, combination over here. You can see like margins peaking out, valuation peaking out, right? And just open up that chart and you will understand what deadly combination it was when the supply is very, very high, okay? So now what they are doing is in the field, there are a lot of capex that is happening and you can see what is happening now. Okay, so from almost 600 rupees, it has fallen to 225 rupees just because of that high margin effect. And if you see the quarterly results, it will give you even more better sense. Now see this. Can you see the kind of margins it peaked out in uh, June and September quarter, right? And just see what happened when the margin collapsed. Okay, so just see uh, from uh, November, December, and next few months what happened. So this is what is a double-edged sword you should be avoiding. And only then you can, uh, you know, make big money if you are able to avoid such kind of big drawdowns, okay? How many of you are finding this insightful so far? If you are finding this insightful, I would request to just hit a like button. If you're not subscribed to this channel, stay connected so that we can learn together and grow in the investing journey. My sessions are not like uh, entertaining, like how people jump in on Instagram. It will be very knowledgeable, slightly longish. But one thing I can promise you is if you like go through this entire sessions like this in my channel, the kind of value you will get will be insanely high compared to all the people who are jumping like a circus in different, uh, you know, channels out there, okay? So that is uh, my promise to that, that I don't uh, do any junk content. It is all what I do personally. I share it with all of you so that you get insane value of your time, okay? So let's uh, go to the next, uh, you know, slide, which I want to just show you is uh, in terms of time correction, okay? This is one last concept uh, and I, I will also show you different methods you can use for different, uh, uh, you know, industries. This is again a very, very important concept. See, sometimes if it is a really good company, right? Like a company like Asian Paints, company like PD Light or company like, uh, say, Aishar Motors, what will happen is when the stock reaches that euphoria phase, right? And it is probably overvalued, say 50 times, 60 times, and there is not much growth visible in next couple of years. Instead of that fall, which generally happens in a highly cyclical companies, you will see a concept called, uh, you know, time correction that will not move anywhere for many, many years. Okay, it will not move uh, for many, many years. And that is where, you know, you need to again have an exit strategy. Can you all tell me why that uh, price corrects basis on time? Can you tell me how to go about it? Yeah, Raji is saying, can you give brief about how to use Excel? Just go to the first step and there is a video for, uh, you know, understanding how to use the Excel also. Okay, so there, it's there in the Excel itself. You can go to the first step. Everything is there. All the steps to install it. It's free. You can upload it on screener and you can use it uh, right away. Okay, so all the instructions are there. Just go through this. So I'm seeing uh, one answer, which is uh, in terms of market is thinking that this company will catch up in future. So they want to give some more time to these kind of companies because they've proven in the past and probably it is not highly cyclical and market is probably confident that some future years the growth will come and they are willing to hold for some time. Now as an investor, you know, the problem is if it doesn't give returns for like say two, three years and it is flat, it doesn't go anywhere, there is an opportunity cost. Right? So we will not make any money for that much period and it is better to exit and re-enter again. Now you might say, but Vivek, it is like timing the market and all that. It is not timing the market because we are even not looking at market which is Nifty and Sensex. So what we are essentially doing is, again, we are using some of the powerful technical analysis tools which will help us to get out during that consolidation phase. Okay, So that is where... Uh, you know, you can again use some of the indicators. If you have any examples in where uh, there was a lot of time correction that happened, please share it with me so that I can uh, take that example and uh, show it to you. So I think classic example, uh, if I remember correctly, was uh, Reliance for many, many years. 
uh, from 2010 to 15. So, I will do a slightly longer period chart and let me show you what would have happened to Reliance in that consolidation period. Right. So, if you see uh, between 2011 to 15, almost it has not given any return. And you can see by using simple technical indicators, it will also take you out in those kind of phase also. You can see like a red over there. Uh, same way, you know, if there is any other company, let me know. I think there was one more HUL, uh, which which went under uh, this kind of time correction. So this was a decade lost it seems, right? So almost 10 years the stock did not move anywhere and you can see most of the times you were exited just by using a simple technical indicator, okay? So this is how, you know, it protects us from consolidation. Even here there was a bit of consolidation, it took us out. Even uh, recently in 2021, there was a bit of consolidation, it took us out, right? So that is where, you know, by using some of these indicator, you can use uh, to avoid time correction also, okay? And finally, you know, I want to share with you a powerful uh, alert mechanism, right? Which is don't live in history. Please write it down. Most of us, when we do research, okay? We have done so much of research, we are convinced about the company, we feel like it is the best company out there in the world, there are so many fundamental triggers, everything is going to go hunky-dory and then bad news starts, right? The event or the chain of the bad event starts. There is something happening in the plant, there is fire in the plant, the new capex is getting delayed, there is some regulatory changes that is happening and as an investor, there is something called as anchoring bias, okay? We anchor to the past information and even though the stock price is falling, we might feel that, you know, this company is a great company because we have put up so much work into it and this is, this will come back, okay? So we go into that hope story loop and that is where, uh, you know, it is dangerous. As an investor, we need to be open to what? Any new information, right? So we have to calibrate our thesis based on any new information that is coming up. It's called Bayesian thinking. It's a very powerful concept. So basically, you know, you need to constantly think that what has changed inside this company, right? So basically when the things change, while, while uh, if you see there is a double-edged sword that comes in where the, you know, risk of high margins, high earnings, high valuation comes in, or there is something that has significantly changed in the industry, you need to consciously take that decision. And to do that, if you just do with your emotions, it is very difficult. Again, if you use some of the technical indicators and tools along with your calibration of thesis, that gets very, very powerful. Okay. So that is what uh, it takes to actually take informed decision. Now, I want to share two last things with all of you. If all, all of you are still with me so far, just type with you. So that I understand you are still, you know, with me. We have spent some 45 minutes, but hope it is uh, totally worth it in your, uh, you know, learning journey. Now, this is what is uh, where P is very misleading. So when you just use the valuation ratios blindly, it can, uh, you know, backfire to you. So when earnings have a one-time, you know, item, so one-time income where they have got some exceptional income and you consider that in the valuation, it will misfire you. If it is a loss making company and you feel like, oh, valuation is too high because the earnings would have shrank or gone into negative, you might miss out on these turnaround candidates. Some of the companies where, you know, already, you know, they are into higher operating leverage, you will again see that, uh, you know, P is inflated probably. And some deep cyclicals, it is again a typical animal where in the deep cyclicals, it will be reverse, where the cycle will be at a peak. In the peak earnings, the multiple will actually go down because market knows that these are very high earnings. It is not sustainable. It will value based on the average earnings. And when the cycle is down, when the earnings are collapsing, the valuation will look high because the earnings are shrink. And we might feel it is overvalued. Actually, that is the time to start the cycle and play that entire cycle. 
okay so cyclical it will be exact opposite high pe will be most of the times a good indicator to buy and low pe will be most of the times good indicator to sell if this is something you heard it for the first time just type ft in the comment box right nobody will tell you this this will only come with experience and by studying so many cyclical companies okay and this is the common metric you can use for different uh, companies for it you can use p p by cfo price by free cash flow for banks you can use price by book value and hospitals you can use this as again i've shared the rational also for each and every valuation multiple so you can probably later on pause the video take a screenshot revise these and get better it better at it okay so that is it for today hope this was a valuable somebody was asking uh, where can i find the excel i'll just share the link again so that uh, you can download this it is again there in the description it's there in the chat box also but hope uh, you have been able to get a lot of value out of it okay so now if you have any questions please feel free to let me know happy to answer your questions and hope this session was uh, super valuable where not just like a theoretical meaning of pe multiple or valuation but you learned something really practical that you can apply in your real world of investing yeah hope it was super practical in your uh, investing journey so if you have any questions please feel free to ask uh before we close down this session and if you want to go through some of the powerful sessions inside the channel also we have done lot of uh, videos we have a video on china plus 1 which you can go through which is again very very powerful you can uh, go through video on renewable energy this is again one of the emerging sector long mega trend that is going on you can go through a video of uh, personal finance like what are the personal finance principles you should follow go and check it out just google or just go to youtube and say personal finance vivek mashani you will get this video so there are so many such uh, you know powerful videos which i have shared how to budget and save and invest your money where i have shared a budgeting template also please check it out it will be very very powerful so there are a lot of such videos which uh, you will find in this channel which will uh, change your game and trajectory in this journey to a next level so um that's it i think there are no further questions uh, so thank you so much guys for uh, being with me till the end and hope i was uh, able to provide lot of value to all of you thank you so much again take care and enjoy your uh, remaining day